Hello everybody, welcome back. We got ourselves another educational smurf game. Uh, this is going to be a Phantom Lancer game, unless we somehow get uh, banned out or something. Uh, my goal with this is to have a hero that's normally a situational 9th, 10th pick to be first picked. And to see how it goes in terms of teaching you guys everything there is to know about Phantom Lancer. I do owe you guys several hero... Excuse me, I do owe you guys several hero guides, so... Uh, the next one I wanted to do was Phantom Lancer. He's one of my favorite heroes. Uh, so this game, particularly, will be a bit of a... a eh, little piece of... A little dangling piece of knowledge for you guys to get... Teased for the actual guide itself. Phantom Lancer is a very unique carry. Uh, he's considered one of the cheesy carries in the sense that if you get a 10th pick PL in an absolutely free PL game, then... Uh, it's pretty hard to lose if you played properly. So in this educational smurf, we're going to be talking about hopefully any counters that are picked against me and how to adjust to those. And then also uh, referring to how P Phantom Lancer likes to play the map. Uh, how he skills in lane, how he proceeds to transfer from lane to jungle, uh, what power spikes he can potentially hit. And anything that's really not covered in this... We're going to cover in the in the hero guy that's soon to come. So uh, that's pretty much the goal for Phantom Lancer. Let's just get started whenever we find the game. Banana Slam Giant. Uh, so my control groups for Phantom Lancer are that I have a hockey group for his Manta illusions. I have a hockey group for his tanky illusion. I have a hockey group for all the units hockey group for all other units so i use a combination of uh, one hockey for the tanky illusion the manta illusions all other units and box selecting so the box selecting comes into play when i want to select like all of my illusions that i made but not my manta illusions so like if i'm farming a camp and i don't and i have manta illusions in lane that's when you have to start box selecting uh, so it's a combination of those of those control groups and box selecting. So box selecting is a good skill or a good or like mechanic to get used to using on Phantom Lancer specifically. Any illusion hero, it's really good. Tank illusion is the one from your doppelganger that has the same HP as you. So PL is often countered by AOE damage as well as long catch. The reason why PL is strong or survivable is because they can't discern him from his illusions and they can also chase him down after he's doppled. So the combination of heroes with long reach, heroes that don't die to defusal blade slow, and heroes that have continuous AoE damage are the most annoying ones. So heroes that catch you are heroes like Storm, Puck, Quap. Uh, most of these heroes are only really good against you uh, in the first at 15 20 minutes of the game later on they don't become nearly as good because you buy abyssal blade as well as the fact that you tank up so you don't die to their long range nukes uh phantom lancer's issue is that he has to be on the creep wave super early on in the game in order to push so heroes that he struggles against are ones that prevent him from being able to stay on top of the creep wave uh and duplicate so these offlaners like timber saw underlord um what comes to mind? Timbersaw, Underlord, Necro, Lesh. Uh, pretty much anything with AoE. Uh, Axe can be a bit annoying. Tide. Uh, yeah, just think about if I were to walk up and start duplicating illusions, would I bully that hero out? So I'm against Skywrath Mage plus Mars. So I could go for a Ring of Region because this game I'm likely going to buy a hood. Uh, so every hero has like a Midas type item, and so let's not be close-minded and think about what that means. So Midas, I say because it's an item that's supposed to accelerate your farm. On PL specifically, that's Hood of Defiance. And the games where you go Hood of Defiance are the games where if you're not able to sustain while farming, then you need a Hood of Defiance in order to be on the map. So basically, if PL is allowed to be sustained hitting creeps, then he's really strong. Uh, when it comes to his farming pace because the fact is he has free illusions with a passive that all deal a decent amount of damage which will speed up his farm the only issue pl has is that he gets worn, worn down over time and that becomes uh, 
that basically becomes overwhelming to a point where his illusions are only as strong as he is. Like, if his illusions are 300 health, you know, they're gonna die almost instantly. So this looks like some weird starting items. PL's base damage is okay. Um, but we're against Mars Sky, a lane that's gonna spam a lot of spells. And then we're also gonna build into a hood. So PL's one of the few heroes I'll still build this item on. Uh, pretty much only heroes that turn this item into something. At least in 7.28c, that might change in some future patch. Uh, they didn't really pick heroes that are that amazing against me, but the fact is it's really hard to fight into them right now. They have really strong team fight with Monkey King. Monkey King's actually one of the better cores against PL, because PL has to be point blank range to deal damage, and, uh, at least with his real hero. And Monkey King's really good against that, because he has his Ags and Duplicates. Medusa is the same. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple experimental builds here uh, in regards to I want to try the Ag Shard in games like this. The thing about PL is you have to basically really think hard about when you commit. He's similar to PA in the sense that he has like a low cooldown gap closer. I'm going to mute my team. They're just being... I can't concentrate. He has a low cooldown gap close. And uh, if he used incorrectly, he can kind of just die sometimes. But the point is you can use it at any given moment. Uh, so the problem is with PL that it's good that you can go in at any moment, but if you choose to go in at the wrong moment, it's very costly. The battle begins. So this patch is all about uh, minimizing however many items you need to buy before you leave your lane. Uh, PL is not good in lane versus Mars, because Mars has two AoE spells. But both of those spells don't really do much to him as the game goes on. Spear only stuns one target. And the W doesn't really scale that well against you. So it's a bad lane matchup, but game matchup-wise, it's not that bad at all. So it's important on PL-type heroes that scale really well, but have a rough early game, that you just survive the lane, um, look for small openings to play, but that's it. Maybe be aggressive, but I'm just going to be defensively creep aggroing. We're chilling, leveling our lance for securing the range. Just keep defensively creep aggroing. Nothing fancy. And throw a little pot shot in here if we see it. Nope. Their lanes, like, Skyrath's like a grief four position hero, right? Like, his goal is to ruin your game as a carry. So we don't care that much about lane equilibrium. We care more so about getting all the CS. And if the, we have more creeps than they do, they can't really be aggressive on us. Okay, we dodge that. I'm faking a little bit. We will. Oh, didn't work out. Oops. Didn't uh, manage to turn my passive off. So when you're going early treads on PL, you usually go Band of Elven skin first. I don't have my courier selection hockey enabled. Second, guys. Notice how they can't really be aggressive on me because I have more creeps than they do. Luckily, they haven't really harassed me at all. Or, you know. My silencer from sack pulled. Nice of him. Gonna make sure the lane uh, doesn't go too much into my tower, but we're gonna keep it outside of tower range. This is like a... Don't get dove, but we can actually contest this as soon as possible. Notice that's why we start attacking creeps early. Because we wanted this to be over as soon as possible. And they actually just let us have it, so that's nice of them. So, I only go W if it's needed for survivability, which here I might actually be in some trouble. I could have gone W in this lane. Wasn't necessary though. We're gonna use a little bit of extra mana because we had stick charges and we're gonna keep getting stick charges. We might actually go down here. Sadly, our silencer used his salve on himself. Sadly, you can't turn your passive off when it's on cooldown. Hmm. A little frustrating. We'll have to fly ourselves a self. Uh, so we're gonna give ourselves lane survivable items. We're not gonna fly ourselves a self. It's hard to concentrate on my passive when I'm talking. Silencer's pulling again. Just keep playing defensively. Don't know where Skyrath is. Was a little bit distracted by the fucking hockeys. Turn my passive off. I'm gonna try to race for that creep. Nice. Yes. 
want to kill these so we have another pole camp to work with. Scarlet So like I said, lane matchup's bad, game matchup's good. So notice how chill we're playing it. I don't know where Sky is, and I don't have a support that seems to like care about my game. Like he didn't solve me and all that kind of stuff. So I could be more aggressive in lane, I think. But if I were to like go aggressive in lane and die, or have no salve and just drop all my HP, then it'd just be a disaster. So notice how we took that brief opportunity to be aggressive since we have our raindrop and some tangos and we're full HP now. But before that, we were just chilling. Because these are the type of lanes where just don't grief yourself. If you fall behind, it's going to be real rough. But if the lane's okay, then we're chilling. He's going to go for that range. Okay, as you managed to hit me there. Bounty runes are coming out. So even though Skyrath Mage seemed to have left... The raindrops are nice for the mana regen. Just a nice item on PL in general. PL is similar to PA. Doesn't really need boots to operate in lanes most of the time. So usually when you go treads, you get the Glove of Haste and the Band of Elven skin first. That's how often we're defensively creep aggroing. Nothing fancy. Just keep defensively creep aggroing. Feel very good at it. You can use your dop you can use your rush to secure CS. You know, scout for Mars, see if he's pulling. He is. Our silencer is also wrapping behind. It's a good opportunity to do a lot of damage, maybe kill him. Okay, Skyrath Mage TP. Nice. Help our silencer out a bit, let basically escort him away. Okay. I don't really know where Skyrath Mage went, he just decided to let me have a good a free lane. Make sure we kill the catapult. Play for that level 6 timing, that's when you can jungle reliably. Until then, the goal is to keep the lane back. Obviously earlier I said I was going to push the lane, but that's more so to deter heroes like Skyrath Mage. It's a nice method of drawing attention away from yourself, because it forces them to deal with the creeps. One of the situations where you can push the wave and not feel too bad about it. It's kind of a situation where you learn if you keep the lane normal, you kind of just get fucked. So, it's the uh, way I came to that knowledge. Uh, so we're gonna buy the... We're gonna just, uh... I'm gonna save up for the Ring of Health. So they're not really harassing me, but the fact is, I would normally want to buy a hood against those type of heroes. Mars plus Sky. A lot of magic burst damage. So, gotta be careful. We can double out of Arena. That's why we match up against him well later. Just gotta be careful. We can never use Doppel here. It's really important on PL to recognize the importance of your Doppel at any given game you're in. Because if you use it, and the opponent can kill you without you having it, then it's just a... They're, they're usually going to just jump you right away. So we're almost 6. Mars is 6, though. So we're going to go hit a jungle creep to make sure we secure our 6. Nothing fancy here. Oh, nice neutral item. Let's check mid lane, see how it's going. Level 7 to level 5. We have a mid Nyx, I didn't realize that. So PL in these situations is usually best to just uh, be ready to go back to lane. But this is often what happens as PL, is this. So usually you feel very hot, happy to be jungling, but you're also happy to contribute to your lane. But you don't want to be just a sitting duck in lane. So you basically let the opponent fuck off first. And then if they stay, you just stay jungling. Pretty much always content to defend my tower super early. If I'm having a good start. The only time I really give up my tower willingly is if I had like a really bad lane, maybe died once or twice. Always back off to get my proc on my E. I can rotate towards mid just in case Monkey King tries to apply some pressure. And Nyx isn't exactly the most helpable hero right now, he's kind of being useless. But I'm not going to grief myself or anything, but I see them bottom, they're just sitting here. This is something 3Ks will often do, they just sit here. Not pressuring, really. It's the nice part about Peel. You can pick him in first pick and... Just chilling. It's really important to know that any, any carry hero you're playing, what you're okay with. And right now, nothing's happening to me. I'm hitting some neutrals. Ideally... Oh. Uh oh. That was unlucky. I just be dead. You can use Phantom Rush to get away here. Maybe Shaman will help out. Damn, he killed my Kerr. 
Oh, it's a nice use of Phantom Rush. Unfortunate that my doppel landed me up top. Not the end of the world that my career died because I had the crucial components. We're not going to be in the river much, so we'll take the one extra all step. It's not done yet. Oops. Uh, Mars is TPing out, so we're actually going to be willing to go bottom after this creep wave, or after this creep camp. We're going to clear one wave and get out. Mars is going to have to regen, so this is our chance to push out the wave. And then do basic, basically repeat the farming pattern we just started like two minutes ago. Towards mid. So PL is a hero that's capable of contributing, as long as he's not the one getting gone on. So notice how like when Monkey King went on me, I'm kind of just a useless, helpless, like, you know, you know, save me, I'm damsel in distress. Uh, but if somebody else gets gone on, I can usually help them. Or like turn it in some valuable way. Not gonna go for that bounty. If one of their heroes there, it's rough. But, oh. Looks like they blocked the small camp. It's annoying. Coin for me. So I can't really occupy bottom because PL operates very poorly on his own side of the map at this stage. Usually they have support ultimates. Usually the mid laner is willing to rotate on you. So in these type of situations on PL, never return to your safe lane if this guy has any threat on you. Just don't. Please don't. Don't do this. Notice how the only time I went back was when uh, the enemy offlaner was TPing out. We can look to bully this guy. There's just nothing else to do with our time. I personally like maxing Lance. I know a lot of PLs like to max their W. But my only contribution at this stage in the game is my Lance. So I like to max it. Just hold on to my W a bit more conservatively. Like this. Topple out. A little bit of a random engagement going on here. Okay. That's life. Nothing fancy. There was no creeps to farm during that time, so we're going to back to the triangle. Working on our defusal. Our defusal will be a bit late compared to, like, you know, rushing a defusal, obviously, but we're okay with that. I'll go Yasha if I think I want to farm, but I don't need sustain. So what's Axe got? So he's going to be playing aggressive. We can always look to contribute to fights. Notice how, like, all these fights, like, as long as my team is the one initiating the aggression, I'm okay to be there. So I usually posture myself aggressively on the map on PL, while also cleaning up the farm. PL's a decent ancient farmer. Uh, what you can do here is once I get a couple illusions, I can de-aggro and then run to the other side. So that makes this dragon not hit me. Or, I guess it still hits me. Not as much, though. This is the part that's nice about the hood. PL really can't do ancient stacks, because all the ancients do AoE. You notice how often I'm backing off and re-rushing. Just leaving bottom lane to do its thing. Checking items. Checking items. As long as nothing's happening in the game, I'm usually content on PL. As long as I'm getting to hit creeps. Mars is going death so, so he's going to get damage heavy build. And look to help my team again, based purely on how many creeps are alive. Notice how there's no camps. But it looks like nothing's happening mid. I'll go clean up top. Fax TP's in, we can maybe be aggressive on the Dusa. Your top tower is under attack. Okay, we're watching the map. We're happy because we have vision here. Maybe take a camp away from Dusa. Nice. That's a double efficiency on that camp right there. And this is the way you can look to play on PL. It's just like cautiously aggressive, you know? You see what I'm saying by cautiously? None of these moves are like some serious, like, let's run at the fucking opponent thing. It's like, oh, I see people on the map. Usually PL's really good in 1v1s. Like, if he's against one other hero on the map, he's usually really strong at being aggressive. You saw there, like, Medusa had to run away from me. That's kind of the situation PL presents a lot. That's what you should be looking for. And usually if there's heroes like Ember or Timber uh, that are strong against you 1v1, you just avoid those guys. Notice how I'm lancing the range creep. Very reliable way to secure that. I think I see people coming, so I have to back off a bit. Or they're all missing, I guess is a better way of saying it. So the reason why PL likes the top half of the map or the opponent off lane is because, or opponent safe lane is because his doppels his way of escaping. So it's all about like creating enough space between you and them that they can't jump you before you doppel. 
And then once you doppel, it's like enough space between you and them to, uh, to escape. So if Peel's like down here, his doppel isn't like good. You like retreating and they just dive you. But here, if you keep some distance, push the lane in, it's really hard to kill you. That's why Peel likes the top half of the map. Just watching what my team's doing. Constantly monitoring because I'm always willing to help. So it may look like the hood was kind of useless. And it may be more useless in low MMR games. In high MMR games, they'd be fucking with me a lot more. Maybe looking to gank me with Skyrath. And this hood is like an insurance policy. It lets me farm more of the map. Like this. Gotta be ready to topple. This is where the hood comes in. I can maybe get away right here. Nice. Nice, paid off in, in proof and concept there. Nice. Ooh. They overextended. There's the hood. Thing about PL is since his passive gives him 44 free agility, you don't necessarily need super early agility items to have any amount of farm speed. If you compare him to Terrorblade, like Terrorblade can't rush Hood because he doesn't get 44 free agility from his from any of his abilities, right? So that allows PL to go more of a utility farm item, which is more about the sustain rather than the um, you know farm speed. Because the fact is, like I said on PL, the main farm deterrent you have is the fact that you get bullied out of places. And you don't feel safe to farm camps. But if I'm allowed to farm, my pace of farming is pretty good. So notice how we keep rinse and repeating this. The only way we'd ever leave this area is if we got like four man ganked. Similar to earlier where they like showed specifically that they cannot create pressure bottom. Where the Mars TP'd away. It's not necessary about how many people gank us. It's like, I feel like they can't do anything bottom for the next like 30 seconds. And if the answer to that is, that if that's the case, then we go bottom. Otherwise, we stay top. Dodge this. Keep our distance, keep the lane pushed in. So like now we just saw four people in the jungle and we're gonna finish this camp, but we have an Axe that's farming bottom, so we'll let him finish that we'll farm triangle. If Axe was not bottom right now, we'd go bottom. Uh, so nothing's really happening. Uh, our do shit hero is 50 gold off of a blink, so. Usually in these type of stages, it's really important to think like, okay, I'm a PL, I don't lead the charge. I'm not the guy that goes in first. So if that's the case, who does? And in this case, it's Axe, right? So you just look at his items and say, when is that guy ready to go in first? And otherwise, even though I have a defusal, he's got to be chilled doing nothing. This is how it is, until he gets that blink. Because until PL gets, like, heart, he's pretty much, like, never the first guy to go in. So our team's looking to make a move. We have Yasha. We're strong. We're going to head towards mid. We're going to farm towards our team. We're going to look at the fight. So I can show up, push the wave. Up oh, and claw is actually a really nice item on feel. Oh, who's here? Is an oracle? What the fuck? Okay. I don't know what that guy's doing. And yeah, we get a tower. Nothing fancy. It'd be amazed how often this works on Phantom Lancer. You can look to invade their triangle. That's where Medusa wants to farm, and they're dead on two heroes. This is like an ambush. You know, take their farm real quick, or not an ambush, a heist. Just take their farm real quick and back off. I'm not going to bother stacking because I want to go top. This is a nice thing you can do on the minute mark. So I'm going to yoink their farm and then I feel no reason to be here anymore. And I'm just going to TP top. Medusa's going to go there at like 1830 and be like, I want these ancients. And then they're not there. If I had nowhere else to go, I'd stack the ancients there. But I see a lane that's clearly occupiable. Mclaw's really nice on... PL because all of his illusions get the cooldown independently. That's how my illusions are all critting. You can use Doppel at this stage when you feel really safe. Notice how like I see them, so I feel safe. I'm gonna push in top lane, rinse and repeat. There's just no reason to invade their triangle when they're all alive. That's just fucking nuts. They have really good team fight. Mars, uh, Monkey King, and Medusa. You notice how I did it earlier, Medusa's like, what are they protecting? Like, they're doing nothing here. And that's okay to me, right? 
That's why I yoinked the Ancients and then got out. So it's like, I want to take that area, but I don't feel safe actually fighting them. So while they're dead, I take it, and then I leave. We move. Pick up our item weight. Yeah, my team's just doing dead lane things and feeding. Nothing you can do about it. Uh, we'll put these in our inventory for the mana regen. Your bottom tower is under attack. Keep checking the tower, we're gonna fort it. Oh, we don't have fort. GG. Oh, uh, Skyrath Mage can actually die. Your bottom tower is under attack. We have to dobble ahead of time so it doesn't silence us. I always take the 200 health. I take the evasion if they have any right clicker. That doesn't buy Maelstrom. Okay, so we're forcing reactions. Did we defend our tower? No, we lost it. Looks like they're going to take the outpost. He has a pretty standard split pusher in the sense that he doesn't, um... He doesn't defend his objectives by actually defending them. He defends his objectives by pressuring the opponent objectives. He's really good at dealing with that one guy. Remember that. I saw that word. I don't think I'll be able to get it with my illusions. My team insists on playing bottom. It's very weird. And the fact is, uh, I don't really do anything bottom. So, like, my hero doesn't function bottom. So we'll just keep letting them do that and hope they stop. My axe with the blink dagger is just showing in the dead lane. Guess what that means if the guy that's supposed to do shit on your team is doing that? That means absolutely nothing's gonna happen for your team. So you just accept it and keep pushing top. It's important we understand what that means to us, and we just keep doing our thing. Nice thing about PL is he does this job pretty independently. So he doesn't really, he's not too concerned about uh, his team griefing him like this. Send Manta Illusions down wave, that's the benefit of the Manta. Accelerates our farm. I go S and Y if I feel like the Manta tankiness in fights is irrelevant. So like if they have like a Radiance Builder, or just like a lot of AoE magic, then I don't, I don't go for the Manta. But since this game, the Manta is really nice against Skyrath Mage. It's even nice against Mars. Um, I'll always go for the Manta. So rather than going Ancients, I'll always go mid here. Because I see that there's a fight going on bottom. And anybody who shows mid, I'm happy to be 1v1 against. That guy lets that hit. Did. Oh, I think I could have killed him if I manta instantly. Notice how often, like, PL, all he wants is to be 1v1 against somebody on the map. So if you ever see something on the map, uh, or like see an engagement, you just tower. run at somebody else. Oh. <laughs> GG. Multiply. That's funny. Finally found convenient time to kill that ward. We're gonna make our way back towards top. Buy ourselves a bit booster. Rinse and repeat, nothing fancy. If my team plays around me, then I'll do something. Otherwise, I'm not doing anything. There's a lot of carries that can either go to their team or be ones that their team goes to. PL is one of the ones that usually the team goes to. You either casually farm your way towards your team or your team makes a move towards you. And so like right now, I'm willing to go to them because I've literally cleared everything top. But um, it looks like nothing's really happening. So I'll probably just stay around top. I'm like watching this, but like they're all just kind of dying. Your middle tower is under attack. Nothing to really be done there. This time we doppel because we're close enough, and our illusions will clear. So if the opponent separates, we can look to pick somebody off. We march. So like, this is a case where you could call your team to maybe look for a move, because one can TP top. I'm kind of trying the no communication approach, see how it goes. Force him to ulti, and then back off. That's reasonable. They have no ult, we can fight. I'm only saying that because I'm literally here and there's nothing else to do right now. 
I'm actually gonna try the Ag Shard after hit hard, actually. Okay. That was a little overkill, I think, but... So notice how every fight that's good for us is going to be on this half of the map based on them responding to our pressure. It's literally how PL and 80% of other carries work in the game. Eventually they'll fuck up when they respond, and uh, my team will eventually make use of it. So we have a hero that kills the tier 2, so we're not going to be there, we're going to prioritize pushing mid. Um, we can send these bottom actually. Hockeys aren't exactly perfectly set up. It's confusing when I have all these cacti. Nyx is kind of griefing my illusions, but it's fine. I'm gonna go Ag Shard next. I think Ag Shard is really good in games where it's hard to enter the fights. It makes your Q illusion do a lot more damage. Looks like our team's getting a good engagement. Notice how we're always willing to be like that awkward third wheel that shows up late, you know? We're the guy that shows up to the party fashionably late. That's P.O. So I pretty much always take these talents, unless there's like a specific reason to take one of the other talents. The enemy's middle tower has fallen. Once again, we're gonna look to yoink their ancients. Good idea. Looks like they've taken them? No. So this is a stage where we take over their triangle. We start cutting bottom wave. Since we're PL with a Manta, we can do that very safely. And the Medusa basically says, where the fuck do I go? And then they lose the game. Oh, Medusa's here, so he's gonna die. I think that's real. No, it's not. His team's probably coming. What's going on here? What's Skyrath Mage got? It's hard to check items when I'm talking about the game. So I like the shard. It's actually really good at clearing waves. It's actually not bad. I think it's underrated. Once you get hard. Yes. Yep. Notice how our aggression's pretty much catered to how aggressive our team wants to play. He's got blink. We're oh. making a move bottom. Um, since my team's just feeding, we immediately push mid with our illusions and farm out the top half. But since their triangle's already farmed, we don't mind. Looks like they yoinked us. As ordered. Don't grieve me, fucking neutral item. Got camps to farm. So we're just gonna double our way to break some trees, accelerate the pathing. You notice how it's pretty much the same thing, rinse and repeat, in terms of what side of the map we're farming, unless there's an exception. Do that. Enemy team's missing, so we're gonna back off. We're gonna have, like egg click our way towards this direction because we know they may be coming here. You can always let your illusions finish finish off the creep camp. It's really a good uh, feels thing to get into the habit of is like how long does it uh, like how many of my illusions does it take to finish the camp? That's how you can maximize as Phantom Lancer. You get a good feel for it if you just clam a lot. So we're gonna go butterfly. We're looking to solo carry this fucking game. 
Uh, we'll prioritize the movement speed attack speed over the status res. They don't really have that many stuns. And we've already got a hood for magic damage. So obviously the more illusion or the more damage you get or uh, items you get, the more your illusions will replicate naturally. Because of the attack speed. So our team's making a play mid. I'm gonna resume pushing top. Use our lance while farming a creep camp. That's how we keep leaving our illusions behind. We get a little annoying with neutral items, but you know, that's life. At this stage, our illusions do plenty of damage, so we can just do that. We're trying to connect to our team, but we've almost got our items, so... Make sure you take your illusions out of the camp. That's box selecting. I use that a lot anytime I want only the illusion next to me to do something. Notice how we're going to keep cutting top. Notice how whenever we're playing their Ancients, we cut bottom. Whenever we're playing this area, we cut top. Nice thing about the Ag Shard is that it actually uh, increases the range on your Lance. We don't need to go pick up those bounties. We want to connect to our team. We just hit our item. I mean, Roche is where we want to play, and my team just keeps going bottom. But we can keep mid pushed in. We're going to have a double wave where we get the farm here. Medusa has a Scotty. Not the best item against Peel. It's just no mana to bring. Looks like the opponent's just not farming at all, based on process of elimination. There's just no camps left. I farmed everything else. They're just content losing, and that's fine. We're not going to complain about the enemy team being content losing. Well, let's take Roche, guys. That team in dead bottom again. This is about the stage in the game where we're strong enough to solo Roche. Sadly, we left that creep alive. Check for a slam as peel. It's a good habit to get into, so you do that. Wow, dodge! Um, right towards the end of Roche, I always make my illusions go out of the pit. Man, this guy's fucking nuts. I'm just really farmed. Send your illusions at the guys that can't deal with them. That's pretty much the natural order of things. So, Skyrath Mage in this case. And then, you get the Aegis. And we're all ready to clean up. I'm the daddy. Got our basher. I guess we can wait because we don't have a slot in. Wanna make sure we get the bottom lane to cut it in time. But on PL we can actually just summon illusions. And fly ourselves a couple of clarities. You always want to select your illusions and rush them at the creeps, because they don't rush if they don't get auto attacked onto the specific unit. So we're just gonna start cutting the bottom wave. This is a natural way to take over the map. This is going to be a bit annoying. We'll have to deal with that at some point. But they have no do so. My team's literally doing nothing. <laughs> uh, I should have been mid. I'll uh, put the defuse on the back back for now. I was going to do boots, but we got to run places still. So. Usually you want one person cutting mid, one person cutting bottom. But if the team's going to do none of it, you got to go do both. Notice how it slowly collapses the map on them. Top lane's kind of whatever. If anybody goes there, I'll boot them out. But see, it feels pretty ass for them to go bottom or top of me. Okay, they're going in. Good time to zone everybody. Force out some ultimates. Run away from Medusa. 
Not so often we're just kiting. Playing the fight slow. Uh, this is a good crit game. Never overcommit on peel. Try to always have your illusions around you when you're going in. We'll take the bottom tier too, and then we never really have to come back here again. We'll uh, deal with top first. Uh, the reason why we're willing to give up triangle control is because our axe is dead. So rather than prioritizing controlling an area, we're going to prioritize getting the getting the lane zone. Uh, we'll go ahead and put our fuse on our backpack again for clarity. So we don't doppel here through the trees because it would take the illusions with us. So we don't want to do that. But notice how we're setting up the lanes to be good when Axe is alive. That's kind of like the intent of this move. We will. Playing aggressively again, though, farming our way towards the opponents. We're ready to have our abyssal. Make sure once we the illusions or once the camps are spawning. Oh shit! Hi. Found him, guys. Not really a coincidence when you just run aggressively across the map that you just run into the opponent team. We'll zone everyone else. Usually when you have a hero like Dusa that's like super tanky, you just leave them be and then kill everyone else. Easy to play. On PL, there's no reason to take the guy right in front of you when you can just kill everyone else because you have a natural way to kill them in the back. You notice how often I kind of do this. Just send my illusions in, but... Let them force. You usually want to force out spells and then engage after. Oops, I might be facing Deuce now. Oh, my carrier died, GG. Guess we're putting those back in. There's a little juke in here. <laughs> I'm literally fucking dying with Aegis in there. Just back in. That's why it's nice to have that illusion hockeyed. Haven't really gotten to use that this game, but we got to use it there, which is cool. Send Manta illusions down wave. Sadly, our abyssal's dead because we were too distracted talking to you fucks. See, so we're having a hockey for Manta's nice. In the habit of clearing our illusions out of the camps. That's where boxing select comes into play. Checking on the waves. That wave's pushing pretty hard. New neutral items are coming out. These are the important things to be thinking about during the game. Our item's dead. 6,000 of our net worths in base. We will. More like 9,000 because we've got another fucking 3,000 gold. But now we're setting up a rush. Reversing the map here. We're in no rush. I don't care that they have Dusa. We're way more farm than Dusa. Spell Prism is really nice, actually. We will. He all actually has mana problems as the game goes on. He wants to spam his shit. If there's a better neutral item, I'll take it, but for now, this is the best one. So, eventually, they just get worn down. Oh, that guy's nuts. Oh, send your illusions at the helpful support. That's usually the best play. That's how we're always waiting for them to use spells. Just use their spells, and then fuck them up after. There's no reason to go on them when they have spells. Your PL. You burn their mana, you do damage from a distance. That's why I like the Ag Shard, actually. They're really nice for amping up the damage from a distance thing. So you didn't get to see too much team fighting this game, but I think you can see in the few team fights I did play how patiently I played them, and also how I always showed up last. I was never like the guy leading the charge. Not until I have like fucking Aegis am I gonna be the guy leading the charge. And that's just PL. PL is only as, his illusions are only as strong as the health of his main hero. It's really important to think about that. 
if you get bursted down to half health at the start of the fight, you're kind of like Morphling, where if you're forced to like defensively strength shift at the start, you're fucking useless. Like, you're god awfully useless. So, it's similar on Peel. Notice how the one fight I like had no contribution to was the one at like 10 minutes in, where I just got taken down to no HP. And so that's why the approach to Peel is like that. Because as long as my hero's full health, my illusions will con continue to be completely ridiculously obnoxious. And usually it's very easy to force them to... And usually... Uh, what was I going to say? And usually, as long as you're ahead on PL, they're forced to deal with you. Like, they can't continuously have your illusions mana burning them, hitting them. It's not something they can deal with. Like, they're not okay with that happening. That's why my speed burst was not hockey properly. But yeah, so pretty straightforward game in that regard. I think it's a big emphasis to see how I waited for my team to do things. Eventually, PL will reign supreme. Uh, every hero in the game has like a situation in the game that they're okay with. And if you're PL and you're able to continuously farm top and push it in, you're pretty much always okay with that. There's very few games where that's not the case. Um, notice how I, I pushed the lane into their tier two, but I never really farmed at the tier two. Uh, it's a lot about the difference between Jug and PL, for instance, is that Jug, if he gets gone on, he can usually, you know, spin and TP away or reactionarily get out. PL has to be preemptively prepared for anything the opponent's going to do. You can use your doppel as well as your illusions to create like a wall between you and the opponent. If you put yourself too far forward such that you can't disengage from the opponent, that's kind of when you just die as PL. So you can learn a lot by where I played top, like how far up I went top, that's like specifically PL related. And then um, how I kept forcing reactions and then waiting for them to do like a misplay where the Skywrath Mage TP'd by himself, right? And then I just killed him. Uh, it's very important that you think like that. And then in, when it comes to team fights, notice how I never really rushed in. I always threw out like a Lance or two. I always doppled and then threw a couple illusions in there. It's a lot about how PL plays the game. Yes, the game was rather clean in regards to uh you know i i have like a thousand gpm or some shit 936 gpm but um i hope you guys learned a lot about phantom lancer in this game i'm going to be doing a guide on phantom lancer uh, specifically in the near future so keep an eye out for that thanks for watching hope it was helpful and thank you for donut for his one game on his account if you liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, all that shenanigans, because at the end of the day, YouTube does care about that. You may not care about it, I may not care about it, but the YouTube algorithm does, so please do.